Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumper Year. Hope you're all doing okay. Friday weekend is nigh. Um, episode two then of my weekly watch diary and Bumper's movie of the week. All right then. So pretty good week this week. I watched eight films, all solid titles. So it'd be quite hard to choose a film of the week, but I think I got it. So first up, I watched then. And I keep eye on my list as well. Yeah. So the first. Movie I watched was a streaming movie, okay, and that was Jackass. So I finally got into watching the new Jackass film, and yeah, it was damn right hilarious. I'm not a massive fan of Jackass. I don't watch the TV show. Well, I never used to watch the TV show. I've always watched the films, though, because they are funny. This one has some great are they sketches, I suppose you want to call them, or some great stunts. The first one earlier on in the movie, um, there's a couple of them in a room, and they're like holding these snakes, these poisonous pythons. Uh, my dog's made an appearance. Appearance, if you want to see her, there she is. Um, yeah, they like holding these pythons, dangerous pythons, and then all of a sudden the power goes off and the light goes dark, and they let these snakes loose, or well, they think the snakes have been let loose, and they set up all these booby traps in the house in the pitch black. The guy who goes through the door, hits his head on a frying pan, falls onto a table full of mouse traps. Oh, it's just day white delirious. I think it's called The Silence of the Lambs. Cause they got the heat the heat glasses on so you can see them like they're all green the people and when this guy falls on the table full of mouse traps oh my god i was doubling over and there's some other good bits on here as well like johnny Knoxville when he dresses up as the old man and then um, he goes into like a furniture store and the guy working there like is set up with the guy who's working there. he falls off a ladder lands on this like you know what they do? They land on these like really bouncy sort of blown up things and shoot the other person up. And he shoots him up through the ceiling. And all the people in the shop are like, oh my God, this old man's just gone flying through the ceiling. So yeah, really damn funny. Really good if you want to be put into a good mood. And yeah, just a good good fun. Not not like a movie in the in the traditional sense, I don't suppose. But um, yeah, still hilarious. So then after Jackass then, I watched um, The House of Drip Blood. Okay, this was one of my second sight uh, purchases during the sale. This is an anthology movie, Portmanteau, whatever you want to call them, from Amicus. Simply the best movies from the 60s, 70s anthology movies. Okay, so Peter Cushing's in this one. Christopher Lee, Ingrid Pitt, uh, four shorts and a wraparound. The wraparound's not that great on this one. It's about a detective. And um, there's a murder in a house. And he goes to investigate and he speaks to the proprietor of the house, um, a Mr. Stoker. And he goes on to tell him about all these other things that have happened in his house over the years to sort of insinuate that it's haunted. And then you get these four stories and these four different people who've lived in the house and the fate that becomes them. The first one's really good about an author who um, starts seeing the serial killer from his novel um you know in the mirror and things like that there's a good feature on there it explains to you about an old filming technique about how you'd have a top layer up the stairs and a bottom layer and you'd have two dramatic things going on at the same time to heighten the level of tension it's really clever i mean it's just um bread and butter for filmmakers these days but when the guy explains the reason for doing it back then you think oh yeah that's a really good idea um there's a couple of other um shorts there's a, a vampire one with christopher lee obviously so yeah it's really good it's not the strongest amicus portmanteau movie 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 but um yeah it's still a four star movie i've got to give my rating for jackass four out of five for jackass and again the house of drip blood definitely a solid four out of five so then i watched a movie from 1962 i gotta big up this guy on youtube i don't know if you've ever come across him alan the scouser all right he knows his stuff when it comes to old-fashioned movies i think he's an author as well when i looked him up um but yeah he's great like you know he's got a strongest scouse accent you ever ever yet eh, eh, but i just he's just brilliant his videos are anyway he was doing a review on an old black and white movie now that's not the movie i watched but he mentioned another one saying his favorite ever black and white horror from the 60s was carnival of souls so i thought oh yeah i gotta watch that turns out there's a criterion release i haven't got the physical media copy but i did manage to find it on streaming and yeah this was a really good film i gotta be fair i've ordered it now the criteria release as soon as it finished i ordered it because it was fantastic it's um an old-fashioned ghost film it's about this girl and she's in a car with two of her friends and they're having a drag race against these three boys and they drive off a bridge um and then the girl surfaces out of the car 
and you think she's unscathed and survived while everyone else died. And then as the film goes on, she starts seeing these ghostly apparitions and she's like strangely drawn to this old building on the outskirts of town, which used to be a carnival. And yeah, it just sort of plays out from there. You need to watch it, really. I don't want to totally spoil the plot. I mean, you could say it's been done a million times now, but this was quite inventive for 1962. It's really hypnotic. The picture quality is fantastic. Uh, the acting is really good. There's like this sleazy guy who lives next door. To her. You can't tell is he sleazy or is he just a bit eager to get his end away. And she keeps seeing this weird guy, you know, in the mirror. And she has these... um. They're not blackouts, but like these moments where she can't see or hear. Well, she can see, she can't hear anything. And people can respond to her like she's in a shop and they're just totally ignoring her. It's all a bit weird. And then obviously it all reveals itself at the end. So yeah, if you ever get a chance to check this movie out, don't be put off by the fact it was made in 1962 when it was black and white. It's very um, David Lynch. And it's called Carnival of Souls. So that's the third movie in a row that gets a bumper four out of five. So yeah, we're going really well this week with movies so far. All right, then I watched an amazing documentary, okay? There's um, there's a group of people who do these documentaries. They're four or five hours long. They started off with one that was called In Search of the Last Action Hero, which is based about 80s action movies. That's really good. Then they moved on then, and they done In Search of Darkness, which was about 80s horror films, and it's really in-depth. You know, it was on for over four hours. And then after that, then, there was so much to unpack with 80s horror. They'd done a second one, In Search of Darkness 2, which was another four-hour 80s horror documentary fantastic all the famous people doing the interviews in between the clips robert england barbara compton lynn shay i think was on there i mean the list just goes on so anyway the newest one is in search of tomorrow which is an 80 sci-fi one and that was fantastic okay sci-fi and horror in the 80s there was a thin line between the two so even if you're not even if you don't consider yourself a massive sci-fi fan there'll be more to this documentary if you'd enjoy than you can think of. So it starts off with the usual. It picks a few films like Saturn 3, gives you a bit of a background on them, some funny stories about them. And then it goes through the year then, 81, 82, 83, and spot picks all the best films. There was an interview with the guy who done the flight of the navigator and he shows you how some of the special effects were done, like with the model of the little ship and the big ship. Pretty interesting. So yeah, this one is on for five hours. The other ones were on for four. I watched it in two parts while I was working really in a day. And yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I got to give it five out of five. It was just absolutely amazing. The work that's gone into it and the effort is just fabulous. The running time flies by. Don't be put off. I streamed it, but you can actually buy the physical copies from American. The packs, they come really well done. You get a poster. I think you get like a number for a limited edition. Things like that. So if you get the chance to see it, it's a documentary, In Search of Darkness, five out of five. Okay. Then I watched my 4K arrow release of An American Werewolf in London. Obviously, I've seen this film tumps of times, but I wanted to watch it in the 4K with the HDR, which you do notice. I like the colours in London on the big LCD screens and the clothing, like um, his red coat, David's red coat, things like that. I think his name's David, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. So, this was really good. I won't waste too much time talking about it because I have every man and his dog, hey, no uh, pun, has seen this movie. Um, yeah, so it was fantastic once again to watch it. Again, you know, this is a movie that gets a bumper five out of five all day. You could never rate it any different. Okay, then I watched another album release. This was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So I got this on pre-order. Um, it came last Tuesday, even though that was after the release date. So I think I watched it, well, I don't know, I can't remember what day of the week it was. Um, yeah, so first of all, the transfer is really good. The HDR works wonders. There's scenes up on a mountain in the daylight when they're um, hiding from the lightning, and it just looks fantastic. The mountains in the background, the, the lushness of the green fields, everything. The fabric in the clothing, it looks amazing. First hour of this film, I was really on board with it. It really had me hooked. But then it started to fall apart, really, when Frankenstein's monster signed to took over the show. Well acted by Robert De Niro. Looked brilliant, all the scars on his face and over the HDR and the extra detail. But the story just went boom for me. Um, you, you know, you meant to believe that this Frankenstein monster walks from Germany to Switzerland, like, you know, finds his way, no problem. I get lost walking my dog. Um, but it started off great, you know, I loved the sort of combination with the guy who searches out 
um, the North Pole. It's something Walton, I think his name is, and the way they sort of involve that story into it. So he started off well. Kenneth Branagh, he's a good filmmaker. Um, the style was there, certainly, but the substance maybe lacked a little bit. So I only gave this movie two out of five. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't really leave a lasting impression. I was laughing at it more than taking it serious by the end. So yeah, that was Frankenstein. All right, then last night I watched a great film. I had one of my DVD purchases, so at least I can't say I don't watch them. But my Butterfly Effect with Ashton Kutcher. Sorry, I said it's a great film. It wasn't that great, actually. Um, the problem with this film is the ideas are there, but it's really clunky in his directing and clunky in his script writing. I mean, you know, you meant to believe that by the slight changes to this guy's past, his future changes, which is fine, but it's so extreme each future you know the one he ends up murdering the girl's brother and he goes to jail and it's the most um cliche trope filled prison you've ever seen you know big massive void heads he's getting bummed and whatever you know it's just like a 10 year old could have wrote it if they you know it's just that sort of standard prison drama and then then there's another one where the girl ends up a prostitute and a crackhead and it's just I don't know. It's just too much, man. They should have, they should have calmed it down a little bit. It didn't need to have that sort of. They thought it was hard hitting, but it just come across as cliche ridden in the end. Um, this was the director's cut, so I went online and found out that this movie had a completely different ending to what people saw in the theaters, and the ending on this one is better from what I can gather by reading about it. Ashton Kutcher's odd. A lot of people said his acting is shocking. There is a bit when he wakes up with no limbs. Is what I'm saying. Wakes up with no limbs and like. Yeah, the fate is he pulls a bit stupid. And there's a bit where he's running to a hospital at the end. It's part of the same, um, you know, a flashback sort of thing where he's got no limbs and the running's just terrible. He's like stooped down. He just looks stupid. So what I will say is this film, if we've given more care and attention, could have been fantastic. If this was an early film for Dennis Villeneuve or an early film for, I don't know, who else could probably handle this sort of time travel? Darren Aronofsky, something like that. But, you know, it was just, yeah, it was really clunkly, clunkly. It was really clunky in his directing and he smiled it a bit. So yeah, only a two out of five, but that's the butterfly effect. Well, I will say, watching the DVD on my player, you can see the difference, can you, now these days? And it's not like a glowing difference, but when you watch old DVDs, like the picture's really soft that you can't differentiate. Like say someone's got a black backpack and a black coat, you, the blacks look deep, but you can't see the difference, like it all moles into one. So, you know, really, made me realise the sort of detail height you get with 4K. Everyone thinks it's going to be about brightness and contrast, but it's not. It's about the deep lying um, detail, which really improves it. But yeah, you know, DVDs, I still think they look pretty cool, but just really soft, you know, like no one's got skin tone and everything. But um, yeah, it was all right. I keep watching DVDs, keep buying them, I think, as well, because it was pretty, it was okay. Um, and then the last film I watched was another streaming movie. So I watched this actually... This morning, so I'm slightly cheating because I started watching it last night and I fell asleep after a half hour because it was late. But this movie is called The Novice. Okay, now this movie was really good. Um, it was really tense, it was really dark. I call it a psychodrama, psychological drama rather, rather than a psychological thriller because it's not like not like full of action or like murderers or anything like that. You know, it's about a young girl who's trying to get onto the, the rowing team in a college and she just pushing herself to the limit you think it's whiplash for swapping the drums for rowing and you would be right even the producers who worked on this film worked on whiplash the difference between this one and whiplash is in whiplash you know jk simmons he's really putting the pressure on his students in this one you know everyone's saying to this girl calm down a bit chill out like if it's meant to be it's meant to be but she can't keep pushing herself and pushing herself so yeah so i streamed this one and it was good it had me on the edge of my seat i didn't rave about it like a lot of people did but you know it was a solid movie there's some triggers in it right there's a bit of self-harming in it so if things like that trigger you then you might want to stay away from it but you know it does delve deep into this girl's psyche and is not always a comfortable place to be but it's really well acted that's what i was going to say the girl in it i was looking at the thing oh, i know you i know you and i looked it up her name's Alison Furman, i think and yeah she played Esther in orphan and I carried on reading about it. You know, there's a new orphan film coming out called Orphan First Kill. And it's the same girl. She's playing a nine-year-old again, even though in this film, you know, she's college age. And they've used no special effects, no CGI. And somehow she looks nine again. 
she said is absolutely mind blowing how they've pulled this off. So yeah, she is a really good actress. I gotta be fair. So yeah, so that's the novice. That gets a bumper solid three out of five. The reason I'm not giving it any higher is because there were some issues for me. They might not be for everybody. Where they all wear the same hoodie for like the university, I was sometimes struggling to differentiate some of the characters apart. A lot of them had nicey blonde hair. A lot of them looked quite alike. So that was a bit thing for me. And then there's a character in there, her friend or frenemy, I should say, because she likes this girl, they're friends, but this girl can do it all effortlessly. But the main girl can't. She's got to really push herself and it winds her up. So this other girl can just do it, you know, like that. Um, and this other girl, anyway, I can't talk about this mind, but she talks really fast. Sometimes I had to put the subtitles on to know what she was saying. So that just knocked a few points off it for me. But it was still an amazing movie and one you should definitely check out. All right, then. So that's my weekly, that's my weekly watch list. I haven't been drinking today. Honestly, I'm just tired. So that's my weekly watch list. So we're at the end, we'll give a Bumper's movie of the week. It's really hard, okay? Because Jackass got four out of five. American Werewolf in London got five out of five. Carnival of Souls got four out of five. In Search of Tomorrow got five out of five. What was the other one? Okay, I'm not going to give it to Frankenstein or Butterfly Effect because they both got two out of five. But I'm actually going to give it to The Novice. It wasn't the highest scoring film, but it's the one that people might need the recommendation to seek out because if you like Whiplash, you will really like this film. And although I didn't score it the highest, it still is a fantastic movie and one you can sit down and if you're on board with it, it'll really grasp you. One of the gripe I had with it actually that I forgot to mention when I was talking about it is they use a lot of Rowan lingo. So like there's a bit where um, a girl sets her up to fail during this one test and they were saying why she was set up to fail. I couldn't quite grasp it because they're using all these sort of rowing terms. But you know, don't let that put you off. Listen to Bumper now. If you're gonna sit down on the weekend, it's one you can watch with your partner. And yeah, so it's Bumper's Film of the Week, The Novice. All right then, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next week.